the session is going to be, I'm going to kind of call it how to use third-party assets in Camtasia, which essentially, if you think of it, creating an intro stinger or other things that engage like social sharing and things like that, if I can make a little video clip like this, then that's something that I can probably use in my Camtasia projects. But I don't want to go through all the work of creating something like this or having to pay someone, pay an animator, even on like Fiverr or something to do it. When with a program like this, I can do about three clicks and it will spit it out the other end for me. Right, so that's just some of the things that I like to use assets like this for. Video certainly isn't the only one that I use. Sometimes, well, let's just kind of wander around for just a moment and I'll give you a couple of others. One is uh, videohive.net and the key here is that if you go to Video Hive, it, what you kind of want to look for is motion graphics. And when I say what you want, I mean in terms of using directly in Camtasia. A lot of the stuff on, on Video Hive are After Effects projects. These will do you no good in Camtasia. You would have to either have After Effects and modify the templates, or you would have to send them again to Fiverr and have somebody modify them for you. But on a site like this, we can look at things called motion graphics and primarily these are the kinds of elements that I'm sort of talking about. There are lots of interesting things that we can you know take advantage of having already been created, already animated, and just kinda use in some of our projects and things like that. Right? So you'll find a whole bunch of them here pretty reasonably priced under motion graphics. There's a nice search engine and everything else there. But let me show you an example of what it is I'm talking about when it comes to like motion graphics. So let's see here. Okay, so here I have a little bit of slide footage. This is just a recording uh, of some slides in PowerPoint. Okay, and let's zoom this out a little bit. So here I have slides here. I have some camera video, right? And what you notice is that, well, it jumps from slides to boom, camera video. Not a very uncommon situation. So one of the things that we can kind of use are something called overlays, and sometimes they call them transition overlays. So let me show you how that works. Here's one that I got from Video Hive and it's uh, kind of a comic thing so I'm gonna double click on it here in the clip bin and you'll notice might not be able to see it really well over the webinar but basically what happens is this kind of cartoon thing comes in and then it goes away right so here's how I would use such a thing in Camtasia I will drop it on top right in between Let's make the tracks bigger here. Right in between the two clips. And as I scrub through here, I'll kind of be able to see what happens. So here we go. So I'm in slide video right now. I'm going to, you'll see that it comes in. And at some point, this particular element is going to cover the entire screen. And the secret sauce here is that I want that point where you see it's all covered. In fact, I'll kind of scooch it so we can see that, you know, this is not all covered. <laughs> I want it to be all covered right at the junction of these two clips. Because now, watch what happens. As it goes away, that which is the next clip is revealed. Okay, a lot of times it's called a, a revealer. Like I say, it's a, a motion or it's a, a transition overlay. But since it kind of covers and reveals that which is next, sometimes we just call them revealers, right? So that's that's an example of one of those kinds of assets. And I got this off a of Video Hive. I think I paid like five bucks for it.
but I like it. I use it. I've used this like a lot. <laughs> and I have a, like a little karate sound effect. Hiya! Oh! It goes with it. And if you've watched my videos, you might have even seen that before. But let me go ahead and delete that guy. And one of the things that I can create in the new videos program with a, just a, a few clicks, I kind of make video clips that are very much like this kind of transition. So one that I created inside of videos is called the paper unfold. So I'm basically going to use it the same kind of way, right? So I'm going to drop it on top and then I'm going to take my playhead. And by the way, here's a tip. Notice as I take my playhead, you know, I click on it, you can drag it around and, and preview your video. This is called scrubbing, scrubbing through your video. And as I take my playhead here and I get to this clip, watch what happens. So you get this yellow line. It's called a snap line and it's kind of a handy thing if I want to get right at the beginning of this clip. But if I want to just move through it, it's kind of a pain in the butt because it sticks. <laughs> Every time you see this yellow line here, it, it is literally sticking on me. So that your tip here is if you hold the control key down and then grab the playhead, watch what happens. No sticking. Smooth scrubbing. Right? So now I drop this clip on top and it's a matter of, again, lining it up between the break in these two clips. So let's see how it's working here for me. Here, here it comes. Oh, see? It hasn't covered the entire screen. So I saw the slides and my camera video. That's no good. Okay, so what I want to do is grab this guy and move it so that... You know, I'll even put my playhead right in between the two clips. So now I can just kind of grab this guy and scooch it until it completely covers my union here, if you will. And now, transition life should be kind of good. And arguably, it's good to have these kinds of elements because what it does is it adds like a visual, int a visual interest and engagement thing. So let's kind of watch this. Wow, that's kind of neat. And boom, right? So let's watch it without it and just kind of contrast the two. Now this is just a jump cut, boom, from one thing to another. But using elements like this allows us to make a statement, do some branding, but literally just in general add that little professional touch that is only seen in higher end videos. So, in other words, using assets like videos animation clips or those from Video Hive, uh, I'll give you one more resource that I really kind of like, and that is called, what's it called? Uh, Motion Graphic Stock. This is a buddy of mine named Jesse Radford. And here, you can also get lots of pre done motion graphics and things like that. And again, I'm not going to go into them all, but he adds new stuff all the time. You can get video backgrounds, and here's like a smoke that again is transparent. So I could drop this on top of a video clip, and everything that's black here would be invisible. In other words, transparent. Whatever's underneath would show through. So you can find lots of neat little doodads like this, but the secret sauce and one of the reasons I like videos is because you can customize these. See where it says subscribe now for more videos? That's custom. And when I want to create something that is customized like this, then it's nice to be able to just click, click and kick it out.